Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. We're a little bit late with this specific update, but it's about the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit. And guys, it is not what anybody wanted to see. No, Ripple did not lose, but long story short, this case is most likely not going to be resolved until March of next year. It's a very big letdown. It's not nice to read, but that's basically the documents that came out yesterday. I've also noticed this lawsuit is tiring me out like crazy. Even you most likely saw it over on my YouTube channel. I've not been posting for the last couple of days. It's 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 the crypto space, man. It, it does something to you. Then again, I still enjoy to be in it. I still love it every single second, but it can be tiresome, all this stuff. Having said that, what happened? So, Apparently, we were waiting for this new schedule, right? Again, if you recall, I told y'all we were basically waiting for Ripple and the SEC to come to an agreement because they already met in private. And either they put their own schedules up front and then both discuss it, um, or I, I guess the judge is going to then pick something, or they agree on some schedule and post it together. And that's actually what came out yesterday. Parties file a joint scheduling letter proposing opening briefs for summary judgment and expert challenges in August and closing briefs a few days before Christmas. So I'm just going to read this letter out loud, um, even though it's not necessary. If you don't like it, just scroll past about a minute or so. It's just for the people because it's a very important letter. So, dear judge, pursuant to the March 23rd order, Plaintiff SEC and defendants Ripple and the rest respectfully request that the court enter the following briefing schedule for summary judgment motions and motions to exclude the testimony of experts pursuant to the rules of evidence and the Dumbert v. Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals line of cases. Motions for summary judgment. Uh, the 56.1 statements and motions to exclude expert testimony must be filed by August 2nd. Oppositions to any motions for summary judgment, responses to the Rule 56.1 statements, and responses to motions to exclude expert testimony must be filed by November 2nd. Replies to any opposition must be filed by December 20th. This schedule would not apply to any motions to exclude the expert testimony of Anthony M. Brecco, who offered testimony about the remedies available in the case. The parties agree the motion, that any motion, to exclude Mr. Bracco's testimony should be postponed until the issue of remedies is ripe, following the completion of motion practice on liability and any additional fact or expert discovery on the issue of disgorgement. Under the rule, oh sorry guys, under this court's practice rules, memoranda in support of summary judgment are limited to 30 pages. There are three defendants. The parties propose that each side will have a total of 90 pages for its summary judgment motions and oppositions and 45 pages of replies. Those pages can be divided among the three defendants and allocated by the SEC at their discretion. Each Daubert motion and response would be limited to 25 pages per side, provided, however, that any party may seek leave of court to file an omnibus Doombert or Daubert, sorry, motion exceeding 25 pages if appropriate. So, this is a um, long story short, very big hit towards Ripple um, because it's way longer than supposedly needed to be. And I don't think anybody's necessarily liking this from the Ripple side, but James Phelan and a couple of others have given their story as to why it might not be that bad. Um, for example, here is Stewart, who said, this is again one of the legal counsel at Ripple, basically the, the legal man at Ripple. To all that have been following the case thus far, thank you. Know that Ripple is pushing hard and that the court is working hard to resolve the case as soon as possible despite the SEC time and again doing everything they can to delay. The reason I'm showing you guys this and the reason I like this specifically is mostly for the reason that I would have expected this, right? You expect Ripple's side to just kind of agree to whatever the SEC is doing because fighting it is sometimes harder when in reality the judge just keeps agreeing with the SEC anyway, so rather just accept it and deal with the fact that it takes a couple months extra. But we just needed him to acknowledge the fact that the SEC is just trying to delay and delay tactics and that this is not their preferred option 
um, because they, of course, want to resolve things as quickly as possible to continue on with business and growth and whatnot. But it's the way that the, the game has been played. Now, honestly, I am actually very sad about the outcome, but I should remember one thing. I'm not going to tell you it's time to accumulate, even though in reality it is. Uh, the fact that the price hasn't plummeted and done anything crazy does show you, for the most part, that people still believe XRP is going to come out of this positively and it's going to win. Once more, guys, the fact that there's still 40, oh, sorry, guys, $34 billion locked up inside XRP right now, excluding the majority of what Ripple has, this shows you something, and it's very important. The fact that there's so many people out there who still think they'll win the lawsuit, and it doesn't matter that it's going to take a long time, and that counts for something, guys. It really does count for something. I guess a lot of us have this same thought of, you know what? We're not sure if it's corruption. We're not sure if there's conflicts of interest, but it does sure look like it. And I guess we thought it was going to just be an easy little case about Ripple figuring it out with the SEC, which turned out to be the, I guess, starting case for regulation in the United States for crypto, which in the midst of it all also became a fight between different parties around the world against the SEC for conflicts of interest with mistrust issues and whatnot. It became a really big battle. And so from that perspective, I'm kind of thinking as well, adding some time to it, it's not the worst thing in the world because in the midst, we're finding a ton of these things out. Remember guys, a little while ago, we had absolutely nothing. All the information we have today, for example, about Hinman has been found out in the last year and a half or so. I really wonder what we're going to be able to figure out in the next couple of months as well as this case goes on. Now, as time moves on, I'll be posting less updates, I guess, just on the more important details, because I can come out with a video about speculation on the lawsuit every day. It's not that necessary, though. I want to only give you guys the details whenever it is necessary. I'm going to try my best to do that. And James Fullen here said, many people are questioning why Ripple agreed to the schedule. My gut feeling is that there was a trade-off. A longer briefing schedule, but the elimination of a pre-motion Rule 56 practice. If Ripple didn't agree, there would be more scheduling disputes that, in my estimation, would have taken up even more time, and Ripple would have lost that battle if the past is any guide. Once more, the SEC asked for a lot of delays and uh, a lot of extensions and whatnot. Mostly they were granted. Then the motion schedule would have gone well into 2023. In my opinion, this was a very smart move by Ripple in locking in this schedule. And what we're talking about there is had Ripple not agreed, things could have taken a whole different turn with figuring some stuff out while you're still discussing this. And it could have taken a couple additional months if the judge ruled by the SEC side. Because remember, guys, the judge can then set the date and maybe Ripple said, hey, let's do this within three months. The SEC said, hey, let's do this in four and a half years, as an example. You know, it's an exaggeration, but you guys get the idea. And it could have been that the judge was like, OK, you know what? I'm choosing a little bit over the middle. Let's do a let's do a year and a, or a little bit below the middle. Let's do a year and a half, you know, for example. And, and now it's only, I guess, a couple of months. So uh, from that perspective, it could have definitely been worse. Now, to continue on, there's a couple things to say. One is I still didn't do the 2500 XRP giveaway or the winner. The reason for it being is pretty simple. I just haven't made a Gleam campaign. I've set my eyes on it a thousand percent, but as you've most likely seen, I've not really been posting videos, not really been tweeting anything. From a certain perspective, it's because you guys said, Dusty, try to work on the clickbait, you know, and kind of get rid of it. Try to post less stupid tweets. And I've really been rethinking the strategy of exactly how I want to do it. Because at the end of the day, guys, I try to provide the best value I possibly can while making it as entertaining as possible and always having a title which is accurate to the topic at hand. But of course, if people are perceiving that differently, then it's up to me to kind of figure out the best way to do it. And from that perspective, I've just been thinking, thinking, re-strategizing and taking a little bit of a break, as you guys have most likely seen. So once more, I'm most likely just going to do either 25 winners of 100 XRP or something like that, so we can hopefully make some more people happy. But I might even up the stakes a little bit because I've been so slow. But we'll see how it goes in a couple of days. I'm not going to commit to any schedule. I think it's going to be in a couple of days, but there's so many things to figure out here. This is the end of April. Busy time, usually. So, well, a couple other things. So when I check through here, take a look at this, for example. Brad Garley House had something very interesting to say. The, oh, let's actually see the first tweet. Was that um, from Stuart or was it his own? Oh, it was his own, okay. He was uh, kind of replying to Stuart talking about the executive order that estimated that 40 million Americans own crypto today. 
No thanks to the SEC who insists on saying that all or most tokens are securities and that U.S. exchanges are running unlawful security exchanges. If you ask which ones, no comment, no disclosure. Brad says, over the past couple of years, I found myself becoming far more familiar with the SEC than I ever thought possible, which is why it's beyond ironic that one of their goals is to provide disclosure. Guess they don't need to abide by their own rules. The SEC seems perfectly content to let the U.S. fall further behind all in the name of protecting their own jurisdiction at the expense of U.S. citizens. Politics over policy is good for no one. We need a clear regulatory framework now. And once more, guys, remember, nobody really enjoys or likes what's happening right now. It's, it's, it's not a fair game, if you were to ask me. Remember also that this was the worst case scenario described by Attorney Fillon. In my own opinion, it could have been even worse. How? Well, once more, if they couldn't come to an agreement, it could have actually been that the judge sided with the SEC, for example, and set an even longer deadline. We don't know what their proposed idea was. We don't know the discussion that went through. And so I'm going to take it as a minor W, a <laughs> minor win, and a major L, a major loss. This schedule is the exact worst case scenario. Ripple case is going into 2023. I've never seen a plaintiff want to delay a case this much. Only defendants normally delay. Why bring a case and then postpone the justice you seek? That is actually the most weird part about it all. If you're going to sue somebody, you want it to be done quickly. You want your rightfulness as quickly as possible. And defendants are like, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. You're the one alleging everything. It should, in my own opinion, right, be, be pretty straightforward because you know exactly what you want to bring to the table. And defendants have to look for all the different ways they can literally defend themselves, right? But the attacker should have the strategy to take the other guy down, he would think. Uh, John says, worse than expected, all final briefs due December 20th, absent a settlement end of March 2023, for decision is now best case. And Jeremy's second opinion or second tweet was, in contrast, look at the SEC versus library case schedule. The lawsuit was filed three months after Ripple lawsuit and will finish six months sooner. Everything about Ripple case is strangely backwards, but also strangely consequential. Once more, whatever is happening in here, I think will have grave, grave, grave consequences. But damn, I guess let us see. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys about quickly is you probably know, right? The crypto market is not in the best of scenarios right now. Not that many crazy altcoins I'm buying right now. Um, to be honest with you, I'm mostly going for the staking methods. I'm looking for the best ways to stake because it's safe returns. And, well, I'm buying a couple of lower gems. Why? Well, if you guys have been paying attention to a lot of the tokens we talked about a little while ago. Now, names. Which one? Um, okay, so names are not kind of creeping up to me right now. But if you remember, we've been talking about a couple of coins throughout the last couple of weeks quite a lot of them actually have done really well and once more i'm just going to remind you guys one of the ones i'm going for really soon here is fame mma once more i think it's going to do really well read up for yourself though always read up for yourself to just remind you guys the time has finally come to announce the next gem we are extremely excited to reveal that the next project featuring in the tencent gem launchpad platform is fame mma if you guys remember there was this token which was called everdome I think that's the one. I think that was also the one that was launching on this same uh, launch pad, Tencent. And apparently, anybody who bought that token once it launched, I think had like six or so 100% gains in like the, the first couple of days, I think like nine days or so. And that's what I'm thinking here as well, guys. I'm not saying you should buy it because you're going to certainly make money. No, I can never say that. What I can tell you is the idea is pretty good. I think, right, after a little bit of reading and trying to, check through every telegram message or so they already got themselves a couple of really juicy exchange listings lined up but that's mostly what happens when you put one and one together and what i mean with that is i've already told you guys this whenever you see a bigger company getting into crypto in this manner of launching a token while they're already very well known specifically for an audience that is very much into crypto there's a very good chance it's going to pop off. Now, together with that, paired with good hype and good marketing, okay, they got that. But together with that, I guess, or in the same uh, maybe point on a good launch pad, which has a track record of getting crazy launches going, just makes a lot of sense to me, guys, to get into this. And once more, not going to make any guarantees, but I'm going to definitely be buying this. If it doesn't do well, I'll take the loss. But once more, guys, the way I always see it is let's say you have a $25,000 pocket, right? You want to invest it into something because you want to make freaking money. You want to make a million dollars, whatever. 
How are you going to do that, though? If you're going to stake it all and go for the USDC method, which I talked about before, it's it's nice because you get 20% a year, but how much is that exactly, right? So if you, for example, go for 25,000, and we're going to just do times 0.2 is about five, we get about $5,000 a year on a 25,000. Is that good? Sure, that's going to be nice. But we're never going to get to that million. You know, it's going to take 40 years or whatever. If we really want to get there quickly, you have to sometimes take some chances. And I personally think if you get that 25000 invested into 25 new projects, all $1,000, or let's say 250 projects, all $100, there's a way bigger chance you're going to get to that million because some of these tokens, um, you've seen some of my friends actually, a lot of the YouTubers basically, go for a couple thousand dollars into a new project and turn it into a couple million. Uh, again, very often it's very hard to buy such large amounts, but it's possible. And that's why I'm sometimes thinking, if you go for $100, turn it into 20000 or so, you know how long that would have taken to, to, it would have taken four years of normal lending it out to get to that. But here's just with one small little, yeah, small, small little play. So that's what I'm going for, guys. Make sure you check it out for yourself, though, and uh, let me know down below what you're thinking. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.